A frequent question in mathematical optimization is how to formulate discontinuous functions or logical conditions in a way that solvers can solve them very efficiently. We're going to be talking about how to formulate things like if statements, absolute value functions, max, min, mini max, maxi min, uh, where you're trying to minimize the maximum value or maximize the minimum value. Things like piecewise linear functions, sinum functions. Okay, sinum functions are just if it's negative, return zero. If it's uh, positive, then return one. Okay, or other discontinuous functions as well. Okay, so all of these have in common that they are uh, sometimes easy to write, like with an if statement in a uh, program, but if you give those to a mathematical optimization solver, it may struggle. So we're going to talk about strategies to reformulate these in a way that allows mathematical optimization solvers to solve these very efficiently. Let's just look at a first example, it's re which is the absolute value function. Okay, so if you just take the, uh, the result y of uh, absolute value of x, where this is the x value right here, you can see is uh, you're positive, you go down, and at a certain point you hit negative, and then it continues up. Here's the derivative right here, negative 1. That slope right here is negative 1, and here it is positive 1. So what we have right here at x equals 0 is a discontinuous first derivative. And so uh, gradient-based solvers, uh, many of them need continuous first and second derivatives. And this obviously uh, doesn't meet that qualification. So uh, let's talk about ways to formulate this in a way that uh, gives us um, a better uh, result, okay, better uh, optimization results. So if you come to apmonitor.com and uh, you can go to uh, take a course, go down to the optimization techniques for engineers, and uh, here we're going to be doing logical conditions. So if you scroll down on this course content, um, on the right you can see logical conditions. So go ahead and select that, and it talks about um, different ways to formulate these problems so that you get rapid convergence with these gradient-based solvers. Okay, so uh, you can use, I'm going to select this first length, you could use like an absolute value function here. Okay, and that can solve as long as you're not close to the, um, the switching point. But as soon as you get close to the switching point, it can cause some problems, okay, not successful in finding a solution. So that's the problem here, is that that uh, discontinuous derivative causes problems for the solver. That, um, you know, we can go down and uh, see some more source code here. Um, okay, so we can either uh, optimize with binary variables, that's a one approach. Uh, that requires mixed integer linear programming solvers or mixed integer nonlinear programming solvers, and that's certainly a feature in AP Monitor as well, but we're going to go down and, and cover um, not the if statements here, okay, but you can go back to those and look at them. There's piecewise linear. We're going to cover something called mathematical programs with complementarity constraints. Okay, and so this is um, the absolute value operator. We're going to put in some slack variables, and then when we solve it, we're going to get a successful solution, whether it's at zero or whether it is at another value. Okay, so there's zero. I'm going to try to optimize again. We saw from the previous one that it was not successful. This one is successful. It uses slack variables instead. So I'm going to show you how to do this with a simple example here. Okay, let's, um, let's do a sine wave, for example. Let's say we have in our optimization problem, we want to do sine. Okay, but uh, we don't want anything that's negative. So we want this function as it's going along. We want, um, you know, y equals sine of x. And we want to say that, uh, that uh, y is going to be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so the function is going to look like this. And then we want to clip it. Uh, right here and then continue up again. So we're going to get something that's going to look like this instead of the original sine function. So what we need to do is define y equals sine of x and then we're going to create um, 
something called a slack variable and then add that slack variable right here the slack variable has to be greater than or equal to zero and then we're going to um, fit this into our MPEC form or uh, MPEC is mathematical programs with equilibrium constraints or um, we often uh, refer to these as mathematical programs with complementarity constraints it's a little bit more specific again if you want more information on this uh, here is a paper uh, that we recently published continuous formulation for logical decisions in differential algebraic systems using mathematical programs with complementarity constraints okay so it shows examples here uh, it's an open access journal if you'd like to go and look at that. But let's go ahead and program this up and see if we can get um, you know, some results here to show this in action. Okay, so I'm going to have some variables. I'll just have my dependent variable x and then y. And uh, you know, y has got to be greater than or equal to 0. And then I'll have my slack variable as well, s. And that also has to be greater than or equal to 0. Next, I'm going to have z. That's going to be my original function, my sine function, just so I can compare the two. And I'll have some equations. Um, I'm just going to put in uh, the derivative of x equals 1, just so I can get um, x starting at 0 and then uh, climbing up as my time goes up. Okay, so that's going to be my dependent variable. And then here's how I formulate my complementarity constraint. I have my slack times my y value is less than or equal to zero but there's two other ways in the paper that discusses that you can either set it equal to zero which is a little harder to solve or you can also minimize um, s times y now if you have other objectives uh, sometimes that interferes uh, with the objective okay but at the solution it should equal zero sometimes they put a little bit of an epsilon here okay a little bit of a um, you know this would be a factor here like one times 10 to the minus 4 just to allow it to uh, try to solve okay a little bit easier but what I'm going to do is uh, just replace this back with 0 let's just go ahead and try to solve it solve it with y equals sine of x e uh, plus this slack variable and we'll also put in this um, z value as well just to be able to compare I'm going to put a plot in my web viewer as well just with y and z on that okay and then end file Let's go over and create our Python script. We're just going to import NumPy. Uh, also import the APM package. Okay, if you need to download that, you can always go to uh, AP Monitor Python, and uh, you can get it. Uh, just need the APM.py file. You can go here, little beginner's guide to installing. You can pip install um, it in Python, or it's also available in MATLAB or Julia as well. Okay, so then I'm going to set my server. Uh, here's a publicly available server with an application name. And then I'm going to clear any previous application with that name. I'm going to load some files. I'm going to first of all just load this model file that we configured over here on the left. And then I'm going to set my times that I want to, or x values as well that I want. I'm going to open up my data file. Um, I'm going to write a header time and then for ti in uh, t okay so t is a, a numpy lin linearly spaced values between 0 and 2 pi and then I'm going to write um, that value and then close it and load my data file so I just created my data file there in Python and then I loaded it to the server I'm going to set some options as well I'm just going to say that I'm going to go to dynamic control mode and then set my solver to APOP. That's the one by default. Really didn't need that option in there. And then I'm going to solve it and print the output and then open up a web viewer. So this is my program right here. I just loaded the model, loaded the data file, solve it, and then we want to be able to view uh, the solution. Okay, so I'm going to open this up in IDLE so I can run it. And I'll just select run or F5 and then it's going to run through it and then open up this web viewer okay and then the first thing that I want to do is maybe just select um, let me just verify that my original function is correct okay there's the z function right there and then if I just click refresh I can look at my y function okay so that clipped it off at uh, 0 
uh, but it also uh, still solves successfully even with this uh, switching condition or logical uh, condition. Okay, here's my slack variable. You can see that turned on when it was equal to uh, when it was negative, and so that picked up the slack on how much the constraint was not satisfied. And then uh, you also have, if you do trend one, you can also look at both of them on the same plot. Okay, so there's a sine function right there where it goes positive as you wanted it, but then it, it constrains it to greater than or equal to zero. So it's kind of like an if statement. If the result is less than or equal to zero, just set it equal to zero. Okay, so this is it for the um, this uh, this test um, right here. I'll go ahead and post this video to the uh, website um, here on the logical conditions. Right here, I'll post this down at the bottom along with the source code uh, available as well.